let's look at generalization. First off, we've got a few airports, and these are some of the airports that I've been at around the world, and what you'll notice is that they're all the same. They're all airports, right? So uh, you got Kigali in Rwanda, which is always empty, but it's a beautiful airport, and then Lagos, and when I was there, the sign, you know, the, <laughs> the welcome <laughs> to Lagos sign uh, was a little different. Um, when I was there, it just said, you are in Lagos. <laughs> anyway, the other one is Dubai, which is just gorgeous, and then you got Kabul, which has changed. That's the old airport. They've got a new one now, but that's the old one. Um, the point is, is that we got stimulus generalization here. These are all different stimuli. Kigali, Lagos, Dubai, Kabul. They're all different stimuli. They're completely different airports. They don't even look anywhere alike. You know, um, they have some similar similar things about them, but they're and nothing about them is really alike, other than the fact they're airports. But your behavior in airports, right, is roughly the same. You check in, you check your bags, you go through security, you wait for your flight, you board your flight when you're called. It's all about the same. There's some minor differences in there about how they call the flight and if there's signs on the wall or if you're waiting for somebody to stand up with a megaphone and yell at you or whatever it may be or how many you know, dollars you have to pay off to the person to make sure your bags get on the airplane or whatever it may be. But the idea is, is that um, the general behavior, the behavior of you know, what to do in an airport um, is is the same. Basically what we're saying is that the, the stimulus has generalized. You, do, you have different stimuli but your response is the same. Right? So let's think about it in this way. Um, I was in Kigali, I think I was in Kigali before I was in Lagos. Yeah, so I was in Kigali before I was in Lagos. In fact I have those all in order. I ah, didn't realize that. Anyway, um, so I was in Kigali before I was in Lagos and the idea is that I got reinforced for a particular behavior in Kigali. Right? And uh, how to behave in airports. And now, I've, granted, I already been I've been in airports my whole life, so the, the example is kind of contrived, but you'll get the idea. So I learned what to do in Kigali, and I got reinforced for behaving in a particular way in Kigali. So then, when I show up in Lagos, I try the same thing. Right. So behavior becomes more likely in a new situation as a result of being reinforced in another one. So I was reinforced for a particular response in Kigali. I get to Lagos, try the same thing, and it works. All right? Get to Dubai, try the same thing, and it also works. Get to Kabul and try the same thing, and it also works. In other words, I'm talking about checking in. Okay, So just going to the counter and checking in. Now, there are things that didn't work. <laughs> right? um, you know How you board an aircraft in Lagos is dramatically different than how you board an aircraft in, uh, in Dubai. Right? Um, it's just a it's a different process, and by that I, I don't want to get too detailed into it. But the basic idea is is that uh, you fight to get on the airplane in Lagos, but in Dubai it's more like boarding an airplane here, where it's nice and orderly fashion, and you just kind of walk through, and you're all standing in line and all that stuff. That's not the case in Lagos. In Lagos, it's a race to get on the airplane. Uh, Probably, you know, who knows why, but uh, that's just that's just what's developed over the years. So there's some stimulus control going on there uh, in terms of learning how to behave specifically in each one, but some behaviors are the exact same in any airport no matter where you are. Similarity is a part of it, right? Uh, you know, if the stimuli are similar, similar um, of course airports are generally similar in some way, shape, or form, uh, but they don't have to be, you know, I mean, the, the Kabul airport is not nearly as nice as any of these other airports that are on here. At least the old terminal was. The new terminal or was the, the new terminal is pretty good, but uh, but there's quite a bit that's different as well. So in terms of things that aren't similar, you still know how to behave, right? So. Uh, if you think about all the details of the airports, you know, uh, Dubai is all shiny and there's gold and there's, uh, you know, stained, polished stainless steel and in Lagos it's just more like a typical airport in Spokane. Kigali was actually a beautiful airport, um, but it was empty. There was hardly anybody there, right? And Kabul is dirty and run down and uh, was being repaired all the time and it was just, you know, it was just not a nice airport. So you've got these different classes of things, right? So classes are what we think about when we think about concepts. And I don't mean classes like CDP 324, 321, or whatever. I mean like classes of things, like horses. That's a class of uh, stimuli. Dogs are another class of stimuli. People are another class of stimuli. Airports are a class of stimuli. Airplanes are a class of stimuli. There's a lot of differences within each class, but the class is the same thing. When you see a dog, you say dog. You don't say, ooh, look, a cat. Right? At least not very often. Uh, the idea there is that you respond similarly to classes of behavior. Right? 
And once you respond similar, or, or, or sorry, respond similarly to classes of stimuli, behavior classes are a different thing that we'll talk about later. <clears throat> so when you have a class, basically, or when you're responding to a set of stimuli as a class, then what we say is you have conceptual behavior. You're behaving as if you understand that concept right, of airports. Right? So you, in order to do that, you, you need to know what makes up a concept and what doesn't. So what are the things that go into the class and what are the things that don't fit in the class? Right? So big, large buildings uh, may be airports, right? or they may be convention centers, or something to that effect. So big, large building isn't isn't the criteria that you use to put a building in the class of airport or in the build in the class of convention center. Right? Um, it, it could be any number of things. Maybe it's gates or terminals or something like that that you use um, to identify that that building is actually an airport. And you get the class of airports, or even better, you use the word airport since most buildings, since most airports have the word airport on them, um, so that that makes it even a little bit easier. Right? So what we have in class forming, right, or in our concept formation, are two things: number one, discrimination, and number two, generalization. Right. So you discriminate within class. Or, I'm sorry, you generalize within classes, right, or within concepts. So all those. Um, think about all the differences that exist in terms of different types of horses, right? Lots of different ho way horses look, so lots of different ways that uh, dogs look, but um, you still know that a dog is a dog. I don't care if it's a little chihuahua or if it's a Newfoundland, right? Um, you still understand that they're all dogs. You're generalizing within your class there, right? You're generalizing within that concept because uh, you know, Chihuahua doesn't really look anything like a uh, <clears throat> like a Newfoundland, but you still say dog <laughs> in response to seeing either one of those things. Um, so that's the generalization. The discrimination is between classes or between groups, right? Not within. And you learn well, what is a dog, but what isn't a horse. So uh, you know, you know, the, the shape of the face, the shape of the tail, the shape of the hoof. You know, you got the hooves versus the paws. You know that type of stuff. So you're discriminating between classes. Um, but the idea there again is that um, you do need both discrimination and generalization um, in order to do conceptual behavior. So you need to learn what is a class and what isn't a class and how does that what isn't relate to some other class.